So at this stage we've found our roads or our networks. Understand there's a very big difference between network addresses and host addresses. In the sense that if I want to address a host, they've got to be in the host address range. And network addresses certainly aren't. They're a one of the range before the range starts, before the first address can be used, this will be the roads. At the end of the range, there's a broadcast address. Now the broadcast, similar to the mask, but in this case we put all ones in the host portion. By placing all ones, we find the broadcast address. We're not allowed to use that address as a address for a host, a printer, a server, and so on. So what we do, not unlike on this side, we just use this pattern again under the least significant bit, in this case one, and always one. Hosts always begin at that point. Big zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Double zero, double one, double zero. Four zeros, four ones, eight zeros, eight ones. So what we see here, we've got four bits for host. Same rule applies actually with how many available hosts we have. We've got two to the power of four. Four bits are borrowed, of uh, four bits are left. There's a difference between borrow and what's left. We didn't take those last host bits, so therefore, in this formula, we've got four host bits left. We take away two, we're never allowed to use this, this row here where they're all zeros. And as I said, that's a broadcast address, so we can't use as a, that as an address for an individual PC server and so on. So we're understanding that there's three types of addresses, a network address, host address, and a broadcast. That's the three main addresses in this structure. And only the host range can be used. So we're understanding that between the 111s and the 00, everything between here, I've broken this. This isn't the last of these addresses. It just stops here because I'm running out of room to film. So we see here, the 1 indicated in this row falls under 1. But it's an interesting situation here in a class C environment when I borrow bits in the last octet that I can't just go and put 16.1 as an address. This already used four decimal numbers. I can't have five decimal numbers in IP version 4. So the question is what do I do with this 1? This indicated here. And what you find is you can't leave it out there, you've got to actually add it on to the 16. So what we ascertain here in the first row, or subnet 1, which has a value of 192.11.1.16, the first address that I can use, and that's usually the address of the router, so let's say on this interface, let's call it fast ethernet 0 slash 0, I need to see that that 1 needs to be placed on with the 16 and made into a 17. So that address on the interface here would in fact be dot seventeen one nine two one 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 dot seventeen, and we understand therefore there's there's this two situation comes up here. Again, two will be placed on the sixteen, and we find that it's going to be dot eighteen. What two and one is three, so we add three onto the sixteen, we get nineteen. And this is only because. Our borrowing is existing in the host portion. In the class B environment, we could borrow back one octet back and not touch the last octet, and therefore it would be dot one, dot two, dot three. I will go for a class B example in the next video. But keep noting this. So this is basically the value of one here. This is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven. Simple binary counting. Each of these digits are placed on top of the 16. We understand that there's actually 14 available addresses. We'd understand, therefore, with the road, if we understand the first road that we're talking about, which is subnet number one, this road, the dot 16 road, we'd see that it has a range of addresses. If we just put this down like this, it's 192.11.1.16. And the range of addresses would be the one onto that is 17, and then goes 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It will keep going. If we put this number, which is 15, an 8, a 4, and a 2, and a 1, 8, 4, 2, and a 1, add it together, we get 15. 15 onto the 16 would tell us exactly our broadcast address. 
and then we get a 31 in that. So I always find the both ends of the um, range, and in this case that's 31 for broadcast, all ones in the host portion indicates a broadcast, all ones. So what we understand is that 31 is not usable, it's a broadcast address. 31 is not usable, it's a broadcast address. So 1 before 31 is usable, and that's the 30. So this is where we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the 14. Remember we said we had 14 available addresses. So the 14th address, 14 onto 16, is 30. So that's indicating that's our valid address range to designate our host or a router interface is designated with an address or a switch if we address it servers, printers and so on, all the peripherals around our environment that need to be located across networks need an IP address and there's the only possible so there is a limit here with only 14 addresses if I needed more but I still needed 10 subnets well I can't, can't use this system I have to go to class B which allows more bits to borrow more subnets, more host um, addresses. So that's just showing you the address range for the first subnet 1 network. Same principle applies to subnet number 2. In this case the 1 was under 32 so the second row was 32 and if we find the first address on that network well it would be 1 plus 32. 33. So we would go through and find that this is just the same thing. We have 14 addresses keep on adding those numbers onto the road to get our individual addresses. And we could see, for instance, for that 32 row, well, a good easy way to establish addresses is to note that our broadcast, in this case we had the broadcast for the first row we're talking about here, was 31. Notice it's the last number before the new road. Last number before the new road here would be 47. Just a little little tip there to quickly find both ends of your subnet. In this case the last road, last address before 64 is 63, before 80 is 79, before 96 is 95 and so on. Before our subnet number 10, I hope you can appreciate why that is subnet number 10. Understand remember we're going by increments of 16, find the first, we know the rest. So our subnet number 10 would be 10 times 16. It's all mathematical. Everything is logical. Get your head around that. So we can see here, road broadcast in between from 17 all the way to 30 is our address range for that road. In the next subnet, the road is 32. The last possible number is 47. That's our broadcast. So from 33, and that would be the address commonly used on the router interface. The first usable address I'd use on that router interface. The next host I would want to use would be 34. It goes 34, 35, 36, all the way up to 46 because the last one was a broadcast, so 46 is our last usable address. Again, 14 onto 32, we have 14 addresses. It makes sense that it would be 46. And we just continue that situation. The range of addresses for the road that's known as 192.11.1.48. The range of addresses would there be 49 to 62. Because the last one's a broadcast. This road we see at 65. Before 79 is 78. So you don't have to look too much at the mathematics here if we know those rules. So basically we understand we start with a class C network. We're required, we're told this, we need 10 subnets. That will be given to you as a request. Or it may be based on host. Depends on the situation. We ascertain we need 4 bits. We show those 4 bits borrowed, turning H's into N's. We indicate the part where we stop borrowing and leave those H bits, host bits. Binary Structure here, 0101, starting at the least significant borrowed bit. In this case, it's 16. And we follow on 